This third quarter is coming in strong so far. I mean, we have our now cast at the Cleveland Fed that we look at internally, and they're between two and a half and four percentage points increase. So it's for a strong quarter. quarter. Yeah, for the third quarter. What have you so done for the year? Strong. Have you upped your forecast for the year? So I've been upping my forecast. I'm, I'm now at two and three quarters to three percent for the year, probably closer to three percent. So that's higher than is I that a, Is that a forecast you increased because of the tax cuts? I think that the fiscal policy, the stimulus and the tax cuts has um, been a positive for the economy in terms of growth, um, demand growth. And so that's one of the factors. But also there's been more momentum in the economy than I might have anticipated. So businesses still are very upbeat. Um, small businesses especially seem very upbeat. Um, and so that's, you know, one of the reasons that I've upped my forecast. And does the momentum continue into 2019 and 2020? So I think so, but I think we have to acknowledge that the fiscal stimulus on the demand side will be probably waning. So we have to take that into account. So I actually have my forecast coming down a bit um, in the out years. But again, you know, you forecast as you go along, you adjust your forecast as the data comes in. So from about as far away as those trees are behind me, you can see my next question coming, which is if you up your growth <laughs> forecast, do you increase your forecast for the right policy rate? So, you know, I think we've been on a good path in terms of uh, a Fed funds path that's been a gradual increase in the funds rate path. I think what we're trying to do, and when I think about policies, we're trying to calibrate our policy path to the economy. And so far, you know, we're basically at full employment, a little beyond full employment in my view. We're basically at our 2% inflation target. Um, and I think we'll be sustainably at that by the end of the year. I think most, most of the data will come in that way. So again, you know, we're at our targets and yet we have accommodative monetary policy. So right now this gradual upward path of a mm -hmm. policy rate seems appropriate to me. Um, and, you know, why not steeper? Well, because we don't really see signs of being overheating of the economy and we're at our goals. Becky so. has a question, but I just want to follow okay. up with this real quick, which is um, every, a lot of people thought that it was the gradual rate hikes of the Greenspan era that led to the financial excesses that led to the financial crisis. Why aren't you doing the same thing right now? Well, we are monitoring financial conditions. We're monitoring them very carefully. I think we're doing a better job than we did in the past, but, you know, we certainly look for risk. Leverage lending is a little, little up there. I think, uh, you know, if you look at um, stock prices and other asset valuations, some of those are excessive. So we've got to take that into account. So I see that as a risk. But right now, I don't think that we ha see ex excesses. Okay. And so that's why I think it's important that we keep on this gradual upward path. Becky? Steve, I want to follow up on, on this whole conversation, too. And I, I feel like I'm going down the rabbit hole uh, with the number of different iterations we're going to talk <laughs> about. But uh, Loretta, you said that you think that you've, you're raising your GDP expectations for the year, but you think we're on the right path in terms of the number of rate hikes that we're going to expect. And you're doing that in part because you think the fiscal stimulus will slow next year. If, if that's not the case, if if you continue to see things plowing along and you don't see some of the, the let up that, that it sounds like you're anticipating, does that mean that rate hikes that, that we've got on the board right now uh, will, will have to be increased? Well, it'll depend on what happens with the other part of our goal, which of course is inflation. So again, we're going to try to calibrate, but you're right. Fiscal policy could be an upside uh, risk to the forecast. That's the way I view it um, at this point. It, so we're going to have to take that into account. But again, we, we go meeting by meeting in the sense of we actually look at how the economy is doing. So we don't prejudge things. We come in um, looking at what the data is telling us and sort of calibrate our policy to it. I don't think we can say now where interest rates are going to necessarily be a year from now. I think we're going to have to look at how the economy evolves. There are other risks out there, some on the upside, some on the downside, and we'll just have to be um, monitoring the economy as we go along. Thank you. Do you see a need for the Federal Reserve to hike rates above the neutral rate? And what is your neutral rate? <laughs> so, of course, we all pencil in a uh, long term. I thought you used Fed it, funds but, rate. But, oh, well, we could use ink. Okay. Um, but uh, some, some of us use pencil <laughs> so we can change them, you know. The um, humility. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I'm at 3%, which right. is about, you know, the Fed. The neutral you know, rate. The neutral rate. Um, I think it's hard to prejudge that now. In most cycles, you see the, the uh, funds rate going above what most economists think of as a neutral rate. Uh -huh. So again, 
But I think we have to really look at how the economy is going to evolve. And, you know, as that neutral rate has been coming down over time. So, again, there's a lot of moving parts there. I think this is a case where we write down a forecast because I think it's good f to right. give some indication of where we're going. But we also have to look at the error bands around those forecasts. So that was one of the things that the Fed added about a year ago. We actually added error bands around those forecasts that we do uh, four times a year. Can we talk about one of the risks that some people have suggested out there, which is from tariffs? And Cleveland's sort of a funny place in that it seems like some parts of Cleveland would benefit from, the, say, the steel and aluminum tariffs mm -hmm. and other parts on net. What right. are you hearing from people in your district about tariffs? All right, so you're right. We have um, steel companies, but we also have manufacturing companies, right. and we're dependent on trade, of course, with Canada, especially in the auto industry. So it's basically mixed. Um, a lot of the firms have said that they are concerned about the tariffs, um, and then when you probe them a little bit further, have they taken action um, and most of them say if they've done anything, it's maybe postpone a decision, but they haven't really done anything in reaction to the tariffs yet. So again, this is something we're monitoring, but I haven't seen it come up strongly in the data yet. We did do a survey and about I, a third of our firms that we survey said there's been some acknowledgement in their firm um, that the tariffs could mm -hmm. be a negative for them. And a quarter, and a, they said a quarter of their customers have reacted to you it. You talked about risks earlier. One thing that a lot of people have mentioned is are corporate debts, that the, the amount is large mm -hmm. and the spreads are low, meaning that there are people out there reaching for yield and that that's a potential uh, flashpoint with higher rates mm -hmm. when they get higher, that there are potential defaults. Do you see corporate debts as a, a potential uh, Achilles heel for the economy? Yeah, so not overall, but there are companies that are highly leveraged that we are monitoring in terms of that issue, that precise issue, so that they will be affected when interest rates go up. And so that's something we're monitoring as a risk. But so far, I would say generally not a, not a big risk, but something we're monitoring. Right, I got the wrap. It's cold, but I do have to ask you this question. Jim Bullard sat in this seat about an hour. Okay. And he said, as far as he could remember, this was the easiest mellowest August for the Fed <laughs> that he can remember in a number of years. He didn't use those terms, but yeah. do you agree with that? So I, okay, so this is interesting. So I've been coming here for over 15 years, and I would say that, you know, with the economy growing above trend, with the unemployment rate very low, and with inflation at 2%, it's pretty clear a very compelling case of what the Fed has to do. So in that sense, I, I agree with him.